My name is Danny Goodrow. I am a third year political science major. I do have a minor in public relations. Just finished that, so I'm really excited. I came here to this to the University of South Carolina three years ago. I was a biology major prior. I served in the military for seven years when I was 19. I went into the military. To give a little bit of a background, um, I actually moved out when I was 18. I fully supported myself. I was going to school full-time and also working full-time. That was really hard. Um, I wanted a, a better life for myself, so I joined the Air Force. I was in air medical evacuation. Did a lot of cool things, went a lot of cool places. I was in Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, while I was in Iraq, I worked the Hearts and Minds campaign, which is just working with Iraqi women and children um, to teach them how to read, how to write, proper hygiene, exercise, really just building those relationships with their, um, with their people, which is why I was called the Hearts, Hearts and Minds campaign. The really cool thing about it was that although I couldn't speak their language and they couldn't speak ours, we were able to connect through the human spirit. So that is probably one of the most defining points of my life. And through that, I learned leadership and service to others, as well as compassion for the human spirit. I, like I said, I served for seven years. I left the military because I wanted a better life. So left my career, came here to, to get an education. A little bit scary. Um, when I first came here, I actually did not like the University of South Carolina. Um, being a little bit older, not too much, just a little bit older um, than the traditional student, I didn't really feel like I had a place to fit in. Um, I didn't really feel like I connected with that many people. And so I tried to get involved in a, in a couple different things. I found the, um, the Student Veterans Association and I served as the president for two years. Um, it was a great organization. The school cared a lot about our voice, um, but we didn't really have a seat at the table. So in comes Michael Parks, in comes his administration, and he gave us a seat. He brought us to the table, he gave us a voice to represent 3% of our school's population, and through that I found extreme passion for the school, for student government. It gave me a different outlook on administration, it gave me a little different outlook on the students and the traditions here, and really just how things operate. Um, we've done a lot of great things. Um, just, you know, while I was in there, I kind of had an outside perspective. Um, I hadn't been in student government before, so I didn't know how it, how it ran or how it was supposed to go. Um, some things that I did, priority registration, I was able to reach over to Senate, and myself and Senator Madison Stewart, we drafted this resolution to allow prior or priority registration for our student veterans. We met with administration, they loved the idea, and that policy is going into effect this fall. Another thing that we did is we're starting to contract with the bookstore. It's still in contract negotiations, but you know, through learning that, I learned how to research topics, how to present arguments, both pros and cons, and be prepared for that, as well as speaking with administration. Um, and then another really cool thing that we did is we're gonna be placing POW MAA um, stadium seats within the Colonial Life Arena. So researching that, how much it's gonna cost, the logistics, and proposing that to athletics. The really great thing about that is athletics loved it and they said yes. Instead of saying we're gonna go ahead and do that for you, they invited us to work on it or to work on it with them. So it's a really great mentorship opportunity that we're receiving, very grateful for that. And it's gonna be a great thing for the university and the state of South Carolina. Um, and then, and last, really, really, big win for student government, big win for our special population, is I actually met with uh, President Pro Tem, who's the leader of Senate, he's a leading senator, and we drafted a bill to codify the Secretary of Veteran Affairs position, so this will be a permanent position in student government that advocates for a very special population that, that never had a voice before. We also drafted into the bill two deputy positions. One is gonna be focused on retention, so how can we keep student veterans engaged and how can we keep them in the university? And the other part is gonna be mental health. How do we help them integrate themselves positively within our culture here at the University of South Carolina? So those really great things that I did. Um, through that, what I found is that there's an extreme disconnect within the executive and the legislative branch Everybody saw a complete change in student government, and the one really great thing that this administration did is, is they improved the culture. Um, it's, it's more inclusive. You know, Michael Parks, if you look at his cabinet, it's a very, very diverse cabinet. Everybody has very diverse opinions. We don't always agree, but the really great thing about it is that we all support each other. Um, what matters to them matters to me. What matters to me matters to them. And so being fostered under this environment, I think it really helped to grow 
Um, and that's really what we want to, you know, keep going through to next year, working on this momentum ticket with Ross and Merritt. You know, we all have very different opinions, but we all believe in one thing, and it's working together, and it's a teamwork, positivity. And so that's really the, the basis and the foundation of our platform. You know, our slogan is one vision, one mission, one ticket. And um, we, have a, we have a team of 170 people. These are people that came to us and said, I believe in you, I believe in what you have to say, and I want to see this go forward. Um, so a lot of our platform, a lot of ideas come from them. You know, they're saying this is what needs to happen. And, and I think being a leader is more than me. It's more than our ticket. It's more than student government. It's really about the people. It's about the students. And so that's really the basis of it. Um, a few things that we want to do is we want to elevate, we want to cultivate, and we want to advocate. So our It's On Us campaign that we did this year, Mary Copeland Kane and Lindsay Bratton are two phenomenal people. They gave a voice to sexual assault survivors. With that also, they brought together all different people on campus to say we are going to end sexual assault on our campus. It's a phenomenal program and we want to keep it going, you know, moving forward. Some other things, um, everybody saw, you know, there was some dis disconcern with homecoming commissions, spurs and struts, struts and the step show. Um, the unfortunate thing about the step show is this, it's, it's this group of amazing students that had to fund this tradition for themselves this year. You know, you look at it, it was sold out, it was a packed house, and so, you know, kind of listening to that, we want to be able to bring that back in. Um, this is something that students want, same with the, with the um, Spurs and Struts. I think they did a phenomenal job this year of, of instead of it being Greek life, allowing anybody to do that. So we want to further that as well. Um, the big, one of the biggest things for me is our mental health campaign. Um, we want everybody to know that you matter. Like I said, uh, when I first came here, I did not like it. I had a really hard time transitioning. Um, and mental health really it means a lot to me. And I'm going to share this because he said I could, but um, during my first year here, my brother, I got a call. I was leaving chemistry, and I got a call that my brother was being rushed to the hospital. He was in a coma. Um, after that, he attempted to kill himself. Being a thousand miles from home, I didn't know what to do. Being his older sister, I felt guilt. Um, I, I I didn't know how to help him. I didn't understand where that was coming from. You know, he has a lot of people that loved him, and so I didn't tell anybody about it. And I think the hardest thing of mental health is it's really hard to think and feel those things, and it's even harder to talk about it. You know, we saw through it's on us, uh, Mary Copeland Kane, and I'm going to share this because she shares this across campus. You know, she is a sexual assault survivor. And by her standing up, you look at her and you think she's a normal girl. And I think by her standing up, it gave power to a lot of people on this campus. And that's really what we want to push over to mental health. Um, it's important, and there's a lot of people on board to make this, make this a great thing. Um, some really fun stuff that we want to do on that note. Um, we want to bring Wi-Fi into the student stadiums. Um, primarily football games. You know, everybody's phone dies. You walk in there, you have 100% battery, and instantly it's 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 dead. Um, we want people to have a safe and enjoyable student experience, and I think at the end of the day, it comes down to safety. Uh, we want our students to be able to, if they need to find their friends, if they need to call home, um, we, we need that to happen. Also, digital Carolina cards. Uh, they're not a replacement. They are a supplement, you know, in, in case you, you lose them and you have to show your Carolina card that you can still have that. There's a lot of apps that, that can make that possible. Um, for me particularly, it's really bringing together the executive and the, and, and the legislative branch. It's really making, bringing this team culture and what I've been fostered in into the legislative branch. Um, our senators are elected officials. Last year, a lot of our senators, um, I think there were, they said about 30 senators ran, and we have 50 seats, which meant that a lot of them were left open. A lot of them were filled by write-ins. So these were people that may not have had a passion for Senate. Um, you look at public records and you see the absences. There's some people that have been absent for weeks, unexcused absences for weeks, and they're still sitting in those seats, you know. So I think at the end of the day, it really comes to um, you need to be able to lead, you need to be able to persuade, and you need to be able to bring these passions out in people. And that's what I want to do. Um, you know, if there's an issue as to why they're not coming, you know, let's find that out. But if they're going to refuse to come, I think there needs to be accountability. There's not one single senator that pushed hard enough for impeachment. And at the end of the day, being a senator, being a leader, being in any position, it's not about you, it's not about student government. It's a very selfless thing. You are serving 34,000 people on this campus. And if you can't do your job, if you're not willing to serve the students, we can find somebody that, w that will. Um, so that's the biggest thing as well. Um, we also, also have had a lot of legislation that's pushed 
Um, our, our senators have been working hard for this, but these are things that have needed to be done for years. Um, and it hasn't really given them the opportunity to push actual legislation, quality legislation, you know, that's going to benefit the specific colleges. So um, on a personal note, that's, that's something that I'm very passionate about bringing to the legislative branch this year. All right. Anyone have? Yeah. Um, you talked a little bit about your own adjustment um, after leaving the service and coming in. Um, do you consider veteran students a minority um, given the different demographics, um, life experiences, and maybe age difference? And what are the biggest challenges you face and you think other veteran students? Absolutely. Um, statistically, yes, they are a minority. Um, veterans make up 3% of this population. It's about 1,200. That number, we don't know really just because it's it's federally protected data and unless they self report we don't know that we don't know the number um, so yes they are a minority you look at it um, 60 over 60 percent of the the student veterans that are here have a family you know so when you look at that um, you look at they left a career they left a paying job you know to, to better to better their families they come to school full-time and then they have to go home and you know they deal with those things with their children you look at it's about 80% or higher that are over the age of 26 you know so it's a little mentality life experiences so um, I think there's there's two different ways you look at it you know you look at it in that way that you left a career and, and that's that's scary um, to better yourself and so when you come in you have that mindset you know and you're coming in with 18 19 20 21 year olds who are still learning who they are and I think the thing is the student veterans sometimes they learn a lot more than what they expect. For me, my adjustment, you know, I, I came in and, and I'm gonna be honest, you know, I had all this life experience, I've gone all these places, but I have learned more from the students here at this university, specifically within student government, than I than I ever thought I would. I it's been a very humbling experience to learn so much. You know, some of my best friends are 18 years old, you know, some of my best friends are 30 years old. And I think that is an adjustment because you come in with this preconceived notion but once you open your mind to the experience you really see that i think the other part of that is mental health um, we are preconditioned for a lot of different things in the military um, you know there is this stigma of mental health and i think going through life experiences in the war zone and having to come back to a place where you know, some people might not understand that. You don't know who you can talk to. You don't know if they'll understand or if they'll be able to really comprehend what your issues are. Um, so I think those are some of the issues, and I think those absolutely need to be addressed, um, especially with our student veteran initiatives that we're going to be going forward. I think also having this perspective of being a special population and having a different perspective, it really also opens it up, too, because whereas I can't expect somebody to understand what I've gone through. I also don't sit here and pretend to understand what other people have gone through. We sat at freshman council yesterday, and one of the women, one of the young women, she asked a question about mental health, and you know, she said, you know, I, you know, being a lesbian in a southern college, I didn't feel like I fit in, um, and, and she asked, you know, how are you going to bring that forward, bring that voice forward, and. Um, the answer is I'm a product of that representation. Michael Parks gave my voice, the student veteran's voice, a seat at the table, and it's the same thing. Um, representation is not about who you can speak up. It's not just about speaking up for those who don't have a voice, it's also not standing in the way of those you might not understand. And it's understanding that everybody has a different story. Everybody comes from a different background, and so I think that's the most important part of it. I <coughs> I deal with mental illness, and many of my friends and acquaintances do, and we've had frequent encounters with the two organizations on campus that primarily deal with the, the Student Health Services and the Office of, Disabi Office of Disability Services. Um, I and others have had impressions that they are perhaps not adequately meeting the needs of students. Um, what are your opinions on that and what do you think SG could do for us? Absolutely. So that's a great question and it's actually rather heartbreaking to hear that. Um, I have been to the mental health services here. 
I found them very caring and I, I went to them through a mentor so my journey there was a little bit different. Um, like I said, it's, it's hard to feel those emotions and it's even harder to talk about it. So I think hearing that is very unfortunate. Not only is it unfortunate, but something needs to be done. Um, I mean, we can talk afterwards, not we can, I think we should talk afterwards. I think these are issues that need to be addressed. Um, and, and kind of going back to what I was talking about, Senate, it really comes down to accountability. If people are not doing their job, something has to happen and something needs to be done. And I think that is a role of student government. You are a voice of the student. You are the liaison between students and administration. And if something's not happening, something needs to be done. I think especially with our mental health initiative, I mean, this is, this is unacceptable. You look, at the, you look at the statistics of depression in college. Um, I think, in fact, in reality, they're higher. You know, people don't want to go see counselors because they don't feel like they're helping. You walk in and you feel like you're wasting your time. I felt that way before, um, especially, you know, going to the VA when somebody's sitting here telling me how I feel and inside I'm thinking you have no idea. That's not how I feel. Um, so with that being said, I think the answer is quite simple. I think student government needs to be, needs something to be done about it. And because you don't sit in student government, I think somebody needs to speak up for you. And I do believe that that's, that that's us, especially being something that we're really pushing hard for. Um, Ms. Teresa, our advisor, she, um, even, even yesterday, you know, there, somebody came and talked to me after I shared that story. Yesterday was the first time I shared the story with my brother. I've never told anybody about it. Um, and, you know, somebody came up to me and she, she told me that you know that that story touched her and, and she's going through the same thing and my immediate reaction was let's let's go talk and my secondary reaction was I need to tell her advisor just to give her a heads up that something's going on um, so I think it's twofold one the issue needs to be addressed with administration it needs to be addressed with mental health but I think it's also um, the accountability of the students I think you know everybody knows it's, it's bystander training and I think, you know, when you share that story with somebody, I think it is somebody's responsibility to do something about it. Because at the end of the day, I would rather have you here than tomorrow something else happen and I could have done something. Um, Ross spoke to how you're not the traditional vice president candidate. Um, <laughs> how do you think that'll help you? And do you think there are any negatives to not having been an insider in the Senate? So I don't think there are any negatives. Um, <coughs> If you go back in public records, you know, having Senate doing the same thing over and over, and it's it's broken, it's not working. Um, can you tell me one thing that Senate's done besides the referendum? I know y'all know about the referendum. Can you can you tell me one thing that Senate's done? No, I'm so um, that's it, it's an issue. It's an issue. So being an outsider coming into student government, and I kind of touched on this. You know, I didn't know how things were supposed to go. And so being an executive branch, and, and if I, if this, everything, every idea ha I had were huge policy changes. Um, these were gonna change the way that departments operated. So first and foremost did my research. I found what all of the other SEC schools were doing, what Clemson was doing. That's the best argument you can ever have. Um, I looked at what our peer aspirant universities were doing, and I looked at what our peer universities were doing, and I had all that data. And my second thought was, well, if we are gonna go to administration, if we are going to change the policy that happens within these huge departments, like the registrar's office, I want the student body behind it. So my thought was, I'm gonna go to the legislative branch. I'm going to find somebody to sponsor this bill, draft this bill with, pass it through Senate. Um, and it worked, and I did it successfully. Um, I didn't know that that had never happened before, and that's unfortunate. Um, so I think that's definitely a benefit of it. Um, also, I think another benefit of it is being fostered in this environment, this culture that has been built this year. Um, I have nothing but love for this school, and I have nothing but love for student government. Um, I don't think there's any negatives, you know, because like you see, um, one of my ideas was to bring a town hall, a monthly town hall. So it's to me, it's a no-brainer. If you are representing the College of Arts and Sciences, you should be available to the College of Arts and Sciences, not just people that are within your bubble, you know, because somebody can say, oh, I talk to my constituents. Well, if you're just talking to those that are at your arm's reach, that's, that's not the full capacity that you can have, you know? So I said, well, why don't we have a monthly town hall? It can be a meeting. We can make it something fun, like on Green Street, and, and have pizza or donuts. You're gonna draw people in with pizza and donuts, and just talk to them and ask them what the issues are. I think that's, that's 
the most basic thing that you can do. And, and the answer that I got was, well, we've tried doing that before, and it's never worked, so that's why we stopped. You are representing the students. It's not about you. It's about the students. The thing is, if you hold a meeting and nobody comes, that's fine. But nobody can come if there's no meeting, and that's just how I see that. Um, yeah, um, so one of the things that you guys have talked about continuing is the HLS program. Um, what do you think are some of the successes from this past year, and what are things you are you that you're, what are some things you're hoping you can kind of improve on? God, that is a tough question because I don't think there's anything that can be approved except just going forward. Um, they, it's on us is such a phenomenal program. You know, it was brought in the year before, and nothing really happened with it. Um, it's a it's a White House initiative by Joe Biden, and the, Lindsey Bratton and Mary Copeland came. They have made it this, they actually made it a national platform. I mean, our school was nationally recognized for the efforts that we've done. Mary Copeland Kane and, and Lindsay, they're, they're constantly thinking, what can we do better? Um, little plug, there is a gala. There's an It's On Us gala in March. Please come to it, it's going to be amazing. Um, you know, they had a kickball tournament. They personally went to organizations and spoke to organizations about why it mattered. Not just why it mattered, but she gave her own story. If you guys have not heard Mary K. Copeland Kane's story, you have to listen. You know, reach out to her. She would love to tell you. She would love to tell you because the thing is, and it's kind of like we're talking about with mental health. Um, you know, it is a big, a big part of it as well. Is um, when you look at our country, it's so unfortunate, but it's it's been stigmatized that being a sexual assault survivor is you have to fit some type of mold and that's not true um, and she stands up there and she says and she says these words she has said these words they're not coming from me um, I'm privileged I'm smart I'm in a sorority I have a ton of friends um, she you know she has horses so she's like that means I'm rich you know when you look at her and you would never the stig like how stigmatized it is you you would never think that it's her and that's so unfortunate um, and so I think seeing somebody like her, somebody that's so strong and that's willing to stand up in front of 500 people, in front of 34,000 people, and say, this happened to me, but I am not a victim, and neither are you, I think that's the most amazing thing that can happen. Um, they've, they've gone to the White House. They've asked them, how do we do this? I mean, she physically went to the White House, said, how can we make this program better? So as far as um, improving it, I mean, those girls are crushing it. It's just, it's just keeping it going and allowing them just to do their thing, honestly. So the potential downside of a ticket that I see is a lot of it depends on the three of you implementing a program, whereas it's possible that, say, Tyre Stone won the presidency. In that case, how would the agenda and goals of momentum be affected? That's a great question. Okay, um, so, sorry, um, so first and foremost, I, I didn't know Ty or Stone before this, um, and especially hearing, hearing at the debate, you know, listening to them, it's, it's very clear, they both have tremendous hearts, and they have such a beautiful spirit, um, you know, and, and I think they're both, they both have such a strong voice. As far as, you know, say Ross is an elected and one of them are, I don't think there's going to be any issue with that. Um, the thing about the momentum ticket is, is unity, and it's working together. Um, the three of us share a common vision and a common mission and a common passion with these, but the really cool thing about it is, in the very beginning that, um, you know, if Ty or Stone do win the presidency, I don't think there'll be any issue carrying this forward. I mean, you, you see those individuals, they're, they're very passionate, they're very loving people. Um, and at the end of the day, we all want what's best for this campus. And I don't think there's really anything on the platform that, that they would disagree with. Um, so I hope that answered your question. 